So I'm sure you've seen it by now, but if you have not, this is the E3D Revo. This is E3D's new hot end, and along with it comes an entire new ecosystem. Now, I've been fortunate enough to be involved with the beta test of the E3D Revo, and I've had many comments and questions about it since I've started speaking about it on some of my recent live streams. So I'm going to make this video. I'm going to talk about some of the common questions I've seen, answer as many as I can. And also I'm going to talk about my experiences after using the beta unit here for several months and why I am truly excited to see this thing finally come to market and why I think this will be the next big leap in 3D printing hot ends. Now, first off, this will not be a review of this unit or this hot end. This is a beta unit of the E3D Revo. As such, it is not final production. There are changes between this and the final production version. It would be unfair to critique an unreleased hot end based off of beta unit. What I will be speaking about though, is my experiences with the beta unit in terms of how it functions. This has been installed in my Voron V2.4, V226 back here, and it's been running mostly ABS. I have run some PLA through it, and I have used the larger 0.8 millimeter nozzle, but for the most part, I've been running the 0.4 millimeter nozzle. Everything I've printed ABS in the past several months has been through this hot end and this one nozzle. So that includes my entire Voron V0.1 printed part set, my Enraged Rabbit carrot feeder and all the associated parts for that, and anything else that I've printed in ABS since about early June. During that time printing, I have not encountered any problems with this. I didn't encounter any jams, any heat creep issues, or any clogs of the nozzle. I really wish I actually did have some so I can test how cleaning this nozzle out would be, but if you don't run into a problem, you can't really test fixing that problem. So the mounting system of the beta units that we have is the M12 threaded top portion with nut, and this is what's now called the Revo Micro. There will also be a variant called the Revo 6 that has the traditional groove mount that's common on the V6 hot end. They have only just shown off the two versions so far, but they have said there are other mounting options and other heat sink designs in the work. Also, remember the entire cold side of this design will be open source. When it comes to attaching the hot side to the cold side, it is essentially a Hamera heat break once you know the design aspects of those, anyone can design a cold side, a heat sink for the Revo. So I really do believe that by the time these come to market or very soon after, you're going to see many more mounting options for this available. You're probably gonna see some from E3D Direct and you're guaranteed to be seeing some from the common vendors on AliExpress. So if you're running an Ender 3 or Voron or any other printer that you want a rigid mount or any other kind of custom mount for your printer, I guarantee you within a couple months, you're gonna be seeing those direct bolt-on mount compatible heat sinks available. Now moving down, the beta units did ship with the 2010 blower fan, it's extremely small. And while I did not use those, others did in testing. Now I never tested that, I ran it in my Voron, which has a 4010 blower, and that provides plenty of cooling. Yes, this does have a smaller heat sink, um, but in terms of heat creep issues, that wasn't anything I encountered. Now, when it comes to the nozzle changes, I've seen a few comments about it, and most of they pertain to the fact that it's loose. Um, I've seen a few people comment that the hot end is kind of floppy, and once you take the nozzle break out, you can kind of see why. The heater core is attached to the heatsink with a spring. This provides two functions. One, it keeps it attached when the nozzle break is out, and also when the nozzle break is installed, it provides force that pushes the heater core down onto the flange on the top of the nozzle and also provides tension so that the nozzle can't unscrew itself. And for those curious, it is removable. It, it just snaps off and then to reattach it, it just kind of snaps back on. The heater core itself, um, this is the magic sauce in my opinion. This is what makes the E3D Revo special. It does look similar to existing ceramic circular heater cores that are already on the market from other manufacturers. However, you do need to bear in mind, this is something new. The way this heater is designed is different than anything you currently see out there. This is something E3D has developed in-house, and I believe this is the portion they are patenting, although they haven't officially said it yet. Yes, this is a patented hot end compared to the V6, which was open source. Now, I know there has been a lot of comments and a lot of words thrown about when it comes to hot end designs and patenting designs. Now, when it comes to patents and hot ends in 3D printing, I know a lot of people are fervently against it, and I know some are all for it. In my opinion, it's more fluid than that. 
My personal belief is that if you develop a brand new technology in-house and it is something new that nobody has done before, yes, you deserve the right to patent it. If you're taking existing technology that is already out there and you're arranging it in a slightly different way so that you can claim a patent on the way something is assembled, for example, I don't believe that is something you should be able to patent. I am not a patent lawyer, however, though, so I really don't have any control on what gets a patent and what doesn't, but everyone has their own personal beliefs. You can stand by it however you want. The hot side, as E3D have said, will be patented. Again, they have not stated or talked specifically about it. If it's just going to be the heater core, if it's going to be the nozzle break as well, uh, we don't know at this point. Now, as for the magic sauce of the heater core, the heater in here responds extremely quickly. This is the fastest heating up hot end that I have. And for reference, all my other hot ends do run 50 watt heater cartridges. This is the equivalent of a 40 watt. It's extremely fast and it's extremely responsive. So if you are printing something where you have a high flow scenario, you're printing with a large nozzle, you're printing like I do with a 0.4 millimeter nozzle with 0.72 millimeter width of flow, and you're running that at 120 millimeters a second, you're capping out at around 18 millimeters cubed a second, which is about as much as you can push through this hot end, by the way, with ABS under optimal conditions. And then you jump to printing a small detail part at a slow flow rate. What's going to happen is, is if you're running a 50 watt heater in a large copper block, there's going to be a bit of latency. There's going to be a bit of lag before the heater realizes it needs to drop the power down because there's not being that much heat sucked out of the block anymore because the flow has drastically decreased. On the opposite end of the spectrum, if you go from printing a small detail to jumping to printing high flow, again, there's going to be a lag in the larger heater block. With the smaller heater block, and this is an extremely small heater core um, with a very quick responding heater, you're going to have much more stable temperatures. I have seen comments too that some people were worried that when the part fan kicks on because it's got a low thermal mass, you're going to see the heat jump all over the place. This thing has an extremely tight PID tune. It is extremely flat on the graph when it comes to temperature variance. In fact, this is the most stable hot end I've ever run in any of my printers when you're running within their spec parameters. Now they have stated at launch, all that will be available is the 40 watt heater and the 104 NT thermistor. There is a PT1000 variant that will be available later down the line. Now also, this is a what most people would call standard flow hot end. So for those that are the speed demons who love printing speed benchies all day, this probably isn't going to be the hot end for you. This is not a high flow hot end. They have stated that there is high flow variants in the works. I don't know how those are going to be made, if they're going to have a larger heater core, if they're going to change the design of the nozzle brake. I don't know. They haven't said anything yet. But considering there is a large market for high flow hot ends, um, it would make sense that they would develop a high flow variant. Now the design aspects of this heater core as well do have a lot of benefits. Uh, first off, your thermistor wires and your heater wires are pre-attached, they are soldered on. Some will see this as a disadvantage because they are not replaceable now. However, it does lead to a more compact design and it does include a built-in stress relief point. So these wires are secured quite well and they are reinforced for any accidental tugging or bending or twisting. I don't know about you, but I have damaged thermistors many times uh, back when I was running V6s, trying to get a wrench in there to loosen a block or just simply accidentally turning the hot end and pulling them out. So having that stress relief and these being permanently attached actually does make it a more robust package in my opinion. Also, if you take a look at it, it's quite small. Um, this has several advantages. So if you compare the heater block on a V6 to the heater core here on the Revo, um, it's absolutely tiny in comparison. And when you compare it to some of the other larger heater blocks on other hot ends, you can get ductwork for part cooling much closer to the nozzle and for many more available directions uh, than pretty much any other hot end on the market. Also with the decrease in thermal mass, you do have a lessened chance of melting your ducts. Uh, for those that have ever run a sliced mosquito and a Voron afterburner with the stock tool head, you know those ducts like to get melty because the mosquito has a very wide heater block and the, again, the wires come out of one side. So you are gonna have less of a chance of getting melty ducts and have the ability to bring them in closer and from more directions with the Revo. Now let's move on to the nozzle brake. It's a nozzle, it's a heat brake, it's all in one. I call it a nozzle brake. 
So it's actually quite simply manufactured. The portion that screws into your heatsink is essentially the same as the Hamera heat brake. And it does have a little shoulder on the bottom. So when you screw it into the heatsink, that's what it bottoms out on. It bottoms out on that upper flat right there. And the bottom part where you have the barrel that goes through the heater core and the nozzle is machined all as one unit. And the beta units did only come with brass. And you do have a stainless steel tube through the middle. So this is a bi-metallic heat brake. When you screw it in, you just screw it in by hand. There is no tools involved. You don't need to wrench it. And once it bottoms out, you just need to screw it snug by hand. The friction from the heater core being pushed down onto the block is plenty enough to keep it from spinning. This never loosened up on me at all during any prints. With the nozzle brake being an all-in-one assembly as well, you're not gonna have any chance of oozing from that gap that we're all used to between the heat brake and the nozzle. Now, there were a lot of comments that I have seen about the nozzle material and E3D have said at launch only brass will be available. Um, what this means is you're not gonna be running anything abrasive through this hot end um, until more robust nozzles become available. Now, I'm sure the E3D Obsidian nozzle will be available at some point. Um, until that time, I will say that with the brass nozzle here, the 0.4 millimeter, I printed plenty of ABS and other non-abrasive materials without any issues, and I'm still on the original nozzle. I haven't noticed any decrease in print quality. Um, it's all been functioning fine so far. So for those that do want to print abrasive materials, uh, you are going to have to wait for E3D to come out with a abrasive resistant nozzle like their obsidian nozzle, or if they do license the design, or if the nozzle brake itself isn't part of the patent, um, wait for a third party. Now, when it comes to the cost of these, that has been another thing that I've seen come up a lot, especially in regards to the nozzle brakes. Now, because it's, it's the larger assembly, it's a nozzle and a heat brake, it's gonna cost much more. Let's compare it to what's already on the market. Now, E3D have said that when these come to the market, they will be approximately $120 US, and it will include four nozzles. It'll be one of the four available sizes. 0.2, 0.4, 0.6, and 0.8. So 120, you get everything you need for a functioning hot end and four nozzle. So let's compare that to what's already out there. Let's compare that to an E3D V6. Now they are aiming to have the final production version of the Revo be around the same price as a V6, but let's say they can get kind of close and this ends up being an $80 hot end. So with an $80 hot end and $120 overall price tag, nozzles come out to $10 each which compared to the current price of an E3D V6 nozzle of $7, it's only $3 more. Now, yes, there probably is some packaging bundled pricing there involved, and if you buy them individually, it might be a little bit more. Who knows, they might be able to put this out at the same price of an existing V6, and this is only a $70 hot end. It means your nozzles are $12.50 each. But $10 to $12 for a well-machined, high-quality nozzle, with a bimetallic heat break built into it that isn't going to experience any oozing issues. So when you look at the price in that regard, this actually does come out to be a pretty competitively priced hot end and assembly. The hot end itself, when you compare it to other existing hot ends of the market that are of the same type of build and quality, is priced pretty competitively. And the nozzles for $10 to $12, uh, again, hypothetical at this point, um, Compare that to other high quality nozzles and you're getting a built-in bimetallic heat break. So you're never gonna have to worry about ooze issues or heat tightening ever again in the future. That's a pretty good compromise in my opinion. So for the longest time, I was one of those that would buy bulk nozzles off AliExpress, bags of heaters and thermistors that came from a reseller. So yes, you may be saving a couple of bucks up front by purchasing bulk amounts of lower quality goods. Once you factor in the time, the headache, the lost prints of heater cartridges failing, thermistors reading incorrectly, or incorrectly machined nozzles or crappy nozzles wearing out, um, it probably is a little bit worth it to spend a bit more upfront. One, just for the peace of mind, and two, for the easier production and less headaches down the line. So what are my final thoughts and opinions on the E3D Revo based on my beauty experience? Uh, First off, I can't wait for this to come to the market. I'm of the opinion of the current ecosystem of 3D printer hot ends as kind of stagnated over the past couple of years. Yes, there's been some new design elements that have come out. You have your heater blocks that are non-rotational anymore and rigid mounting. You also have things like Bontech's new CHT nozzle that 
ups the flow of an existing hot end by 30% just by changing nozzle geometry out a bit. But if you look at things in the grand picture, nothing's really changed. We still have the assembly of a heat sink, a heat break, a nozzle. Your heater block is either brass or aluminum or copper, and you have some holes in it where you shove a heater cartridge in and a thermistor in. All we've done is taken the same Lego, changed the materials a bit, and built them in slightly different ways. But at the end of the day, they're all performing roughly the same amount when built out of the same material and arranged in the same way. So while it does suck to leave behind the previous ecosystem and everything that supports that previous ecosystem, eventually you're going to reach the end of line. You're going to reach the point of diminishing returns and you're not going to see those drastic leaps anymore until you are willing to take a leap and jump to something new. Now the Revo again is not reached the production stage yet and all my experiences are based on the beta. But in terms of performance, this is the most responsive hot end I've ever run. It does perform, in my opinion, a little bit better in terms of output and speeds than most standard flow hot ends on the market. But again, this is not a high flow hot end. So if you're one of those people that are chasing speed benches for internet points, this is not going to be the hot end for you, at least until a volcano or a high flow version of this comes out. Also jumping into the ecosystem at first, you may find a little bit detrimental. You may want to wait a little bit longer for things to mature, more heat sinks to be available with different mounting options, more nozzles available. Uh, who knows if they're gonna change anything out with the heater core in terms of different thermistor types, uh, PT100, PT1000 sensors, etc. So if you are an early adopter, you are gonna see a smaller ecosystem of components and availability at launch. Now, who do I think this is for? Um, it really depends on your use case. Personally, any new machine going forward that I build, I'm seriously gonna consider putting one of these in it. I do have a few machines that I'll probably put this in right off the bat, simply for the ease of nozzle changing or reliability that I've had and seen with this unit. But for those out there that are already running printers with high quality hot ends and you're not having any issues with it, and you're not one of those that change your nozzles often, jumping into the Revo ecosystem probably won't seem like the best option right now. Um, who knows how things will change in the future once more options become available for these. But if you are looking to get a new printer or build a new printer after these come out, this is definitely going to be a hot end to seriously consider uh, if you're looking for a great performing standard flow hot end. So I can sum this whole thing up um, pretty simply. It just works and it's a pleasure to work with. I'm not worried about any boron nitride paste if I need to change anything out. Uh, when I remove it from my machine, it's simply two Molex connectors and then I can take the nozzle out. If it does jam in the future, all you can do is just cut the filament and pull the entire nozzle and heat break assembly out all at once to clean it out. So I don't need any tools to service anything on here. Uh, its response time is extremely rapid, is extremely consistent. Uh, it prints great. It is hard to judge print quality differences, switching from one good quality nozzle and hot end to another good quality nozzle and hot end. Uh, the biggest thing I notice is it's just more stable. I had less variance when it comes to printing smaller details on larger prints where I was coming from an area of high speed printing at high flow to an area of low speed printing and low flow and vice versa. And for you guys running deltas and other high speed printers there, you want a light tool head. This thing actually weighs about half the weight of a E3D V6 with a copper block. This is just under 30 grams, I believe. So yeah, so I hope you enjoyed the video. I wanted to take the time to answer uh, some of the common questions I've seen about this and give some of my feedback from the beta and my experiences with it. Because I know there's been a lot of questions in comments lately on my videos where I've talked about this. And there is much more to talk about this. Again, this is a beta unit. I don't want to critique anything on a beta unit because it is not the final production version. So there are certain aspects that I'll only talk about once I have a production unit in hand and put some time on it because it's again, beta unit. This is not the final version. So stay tuned. Once I get some hours on a proper final production version, I'll obviously do more content based on that, talking about that. So ensure you don't miss any of that in the future. Make sure you are subscribed to the channel. If you want to help support the content I create and the things I do, I have links in the description as well. On your way out, make sure you like that smash button. I hope you learned something new today. And as always, have yourselves a great day. Cheers.